<sighs> Hi. Yeah, I know. I did that with one hand. Because, you know, my hands. Hi. Yeah, I know. I did that with one hand because, you know, my other hand's in a sling. I fell off Mio. I dislocated my shoulder and broke my collarbone. So that's that's great. This video is really just going to be going into details about what happened, the whole experience from like when how it happened, the accident, and then like my experience in the hospital, the pain, etc. First I just want to say though that the vlogs from when I was in Scotland and like the UK are definitely still coming but I just I need a bit of time to chill out. It's been very hard adjusting to doing everything with one arm for the moment because my arm is in a sling. Anyway, all the vlogs will still be coming. I just wanted to get this video like done before I forget everything. Okay, so basically it was a lovely sunny April day and um, I wasn't actually planning on riding. I was planning on doing some work in the hall with me, a groundwork with him. And then my friend turned up and she was like, hey, you want to ride in the forest? So I was like, sure, I'll come with you. So basically we went a way that I don't, I don't normally go in the forest. I don't know that way. I don't know like that part of the forest. Um, but Mio does because basically Mio has been on this property about 10 or so years before we bought the farm, if that makes sense. Because before there used to be like a riding club on our property and there was a riding school and he was a riding school pony. So like he knows everything here before I did, if that makes any sense. So we were just walking along, I don't know, about halfway through the ride and then basically there's a massive long way which is really good for galloping. We are walking and then she's like, oh, you want to go into a trot? I was like, yeah. But Mio went straight into, from a walk to a full speed gallop. Out of a bad habit, he's probably always galloped there in the past. And like, he probably doesn't mean to be bad, but he lived, he's just always galloped there. So like, he just went straight into gallop and I didn't know he was going to do that. And then I'm not sure if he bucked or not. Like, I genuinely don't know it happened so fast I'm not sure if he did buck or not but I just somehow fell off and landed on my shoulder I suppose and you know I didn't honestly feel any pain when it happened um, Mio stopped straight away as soon as I fell off he didn't try and take off he just stood by me and ate some grass I felt no pain and I went oh yeah I'll just get back on and we'll keep going then but then as soon as I tried to get up I knew something was terribly wrong Again, I didn't feel any pain, but there was just something terribly wrong that I've never felt before. And I didn't know at the time that something was actually broken, but I just knew, I thought maybe my shoulder was just dislocated, which it turns out was as well. But I knew something was not right, that I've never felt like that before. And I couldn't get up, like I don't know why, but I just could not at all get up by myself. And then so then at that point we we're just like shit there's something probably off. So she luckily was able to have reception out there because usually in the forest you don't have reception. Um, so she called my parent. And luckily they were in the house um, because we don't have a mobile phone. I don't know why but we only have a house phone. Luckily my mum was in the house when she called otherwise we wouldn't have heard that. And she you know just told them basically Georgia fell off and she can't get up. So they drove out to where I was which normally you're not actually allowed to like have cars on the ways but obviously in an emergency like when I can't get up then you know they need to. So um, as soon as they tried to help me get up then that's when like the pain really like kicked in. There was so much adrenaline that it wasn't like that bad the pain I'm not gonna lie like a lot of people say that a broken bone really hurts I really even though I had no painkillers you know I'm actually I probably had worse pain like I don't know it, it really is not that bad I mean again maybe a broken arm or a broken leg will be different anyway so when my mum looked at my arm she thought straight away that my shoulder was dislocated um, as both my parents were paramedics and as soon as we got back to the house my dad like literally just popped it back in place by like I had to lay on the sofa and I had my arm like hanging and then he was able to pop it back in place. By far, that was the worst pain I've had in my entire life. That hurt more than like the actual broken collarbone. Popping that shoulder back in place, oh, that hurt so much. Oh, I really hope you never have to experience it. And the worst part is that now that it's popped out once, it'll probably do it again. Which, I mean, I know that it gets easier each time, but seriously, that was the worst pain I've experienced in my entire life. But it's funny, because you know, the second it's popped back in, then you've got no pain anymore. Well, I did, because I still had the collarbone broken. And then I'm like, they're like, oh, so you like pain-free now? Because they thought that was it. And I'm like, no, my collarbone still hurts. 
So they looked at it and there was like a massive lump that was completely swollen up. So then they thought, okay, something's probably wrong. So then we drove to the hospital, which is 30 minutes away, and I sat in the back of the car just being like, ow, ow, the whole time. So then I got there, explained what happened. Like, the worst part was because then I didn't have a sling or anything, and I just had to walk around. And, like, walking around with your arm just flopping around, because, like, you don't understand. You wouldn't think that your arm would have anything to do with your collarbone, but really when your collarbone breaks, like, the whole arm just, like, I don't know how to explain it. The whole arm and shoulder and everything just hurts, and anytime you move anything in the arm, like, your whole collarbone hurts. So, like, I just couldn't use this entire arm. I was hobbling around crying. Um, so then we told the doctor, and they, I really didn't think it was broken. My parents thought it might be a green stick or something that really wasn't as bad. Uh, and then we took the x-ray, and during when I, I had to stand up for the x-ray, they had to take my shirt off, which was really weird, because I just literally, they took me, like, through the hospital, walking in front of lots of beds and people, like, and I literally had no top on. It was, it was kind of weird, um, that, like, I don't know how many bloody people saw my tits that day, but, like, I guess it's Germany, they don't care about that sort of stuff. So, uh, when I did the x-ray, I was just put into a room by myself, no, and, like, put my chest against some thingy, I don't know how it works, but when I was standing there, um, I'd been sitting down for a long time before that, and that's when I felt really dizzy all of a sudden, and I don't know if it was because I'd just taken so many drugs, or if it was just, you know, the shock of the whole experience, but I really, like, very nearly fainted, and then when I saw the x-ray, I was just like, well, shit, which I will show here. It was really a big shock to see that there was a massive chunk missing out of your collarbone. Like, I was just, I was shook. The doctor told me then that I probably wouldn't need surgery. He said that, you know, like, the surgery would be more a cosmetic thing, um, because otherwise that if I don't have a surgery, it may just be a bump in it. But they said they will talk with the senior doctors tomorrow, they'll have a whole meeting, and then they'll tell us the next day whether I need a surgery or not. But they said at the time I probably wouldn't need it. So the next morning they called, and they said I need surgery, otherwise I basically won't be able to use my arm again. So, you know, that was great. I was really just nervous in general because I've only ever had one operation before when I was five and I really don't remember anything, so everything was pretty new to me and I was just really, really, really nervous, like, the whole day. So that day, later on, we went into the hospital, they asked me a bunch of questions like, oh, do you have allergies, blah, blah, blah. Um, just, you know, pre-operation stuff, I guess, I don't know. So the next morning I woke, woke up at 5.20 or something about that. We were told we had to be by the hospital at 6.30 and that the operation will be soon after that. So when we got there I was put in a room with a few other people. There were, there were three other ladies in my room and I think we got in probably in the room at about 7 and then literally the next person went in at 7.30. One of the ladies like, their surgery was at 7.30, and the next one went at 8, and then I'm like, oh yeah, I'll probably be at, like, 8.30 or 9, or... but that didn't happen. Um, I waited and waited and waited, and they never came in and said that I was going to be having surgery, so I went to sleep. So I think it was actually about 11am when I actually went into the surgery, and that was so stressful, just, like, being wheeled on a bed down to, like, the room, knowing that you're about to go through something, like, so crazy is just, like, the most... I hate that feeling. The, um, really, what's really funny is that the lady who put me under anaesthetic, we actually know her, like, we've known her for two years or so, and it's just really by chance that she was putting me under anaesthetic and we know... I've known her before. She's her, She has horses and she lives really close to us. But at, f at first, somebody else who was really nice, a Polish guy, like, another doctor, I know, he, like, jabbed some needles into me, which really hurt. Like, I had blood taken from me, like, the day before, but they fully put these bloody needles, like, I don't know how deep into me, but that was so painful. Like, I hated that. So he jabbed some needles into me, and then the lady came to put me under, under, under anesthetic, I don't know how to say the word, whatever. And she, she was just like, okay, first I'm going to put, like, something in the drip that's going into your arm, which will just make you a bit sleepy, and then we'll put, like, the gas thing on you. So, like, the first stuff isn't meant to make you fully knock out, it's just to make you feel a bit sleepy. And then she asked me about my horse. I know now I've had vanilla for, like, eight months, but, like, I haven't really caught up with her since then, so she was asking me about vanilla. And I was basically, all I remember was just being like, so she's a Dutch riding pony? And then that was literally the last thing I remember. 
So I woke up in the recovery room or whatever it's called. Um, I was a bit loopy when I woke up. I don't remember what I said or what exactly happened. I just remember I talked to somebody, but I have no idea what I said to them. Um, and then I went back to sleep and I woke up. And when I woke up, I was actually four. So I slept a long time, I guess. I don't know exactly when I came out of surgery. I don't think it was very long, only 20 or 30 minutes, but I must have slept a really long time. So then I got wheeled back to another room where there was already a lady in there who I think was 72 or 73 and she had had a knee replacement but she was really nice. It was great that I was able to stay in a room with somebody overnight that I could talk to. She was really nice. It's much better I think than being alone in a room. So yeah we had some top bants um, waiting, you know, just waiting to get better I guess. I really do appreciate all the nurses that are in the hospital like they have a really hard job but yeah if you're a nurse I have a lot of respect for you it's a really hard job as I have experienced and like I don't know how you pretend to be so nice to everybody all the time like you're always like oh yeah everything is great no problem but like you must be dying on the inside that's it's hard work and then the next morning um I got told by another doctor that it wouldn't be six weeks until I could write it'd be two months so that was great cried a bit about that honestly I think this whole time I've cried more about the fact that I can't ride for such a long time than the actual pain of the broken collarbone. So then uh, the next morning, uh, I think it was about one, I was originally going to stay for two nights but they said I was all fine. I didn't really believe them because I couldn't even get out of bed myself but they're like, yeah, you can go home, it's fine. Then at one or so, my dad came and picked me up and took me home. And also what's really funny is that from they had like disinfection stuff or whatever it's called anti-infection I don't know and like a spray and like it made all my neck orange I think it's all gone now I tried to get it off this morning in the bath but um yeah and it's really funny after after how just about 24 hours of like my arm being in a sling it's completely lost all its muscle like when I was in the bath this morning and I took it off I have no muscle in that arm at all it's like all gone so it is going to be a pain having to like get muscles back on this arm because obviously for riding I need that, especially riding a horse like Vanilla who's very strong. So that, I have now been home just over a day now. Like today has been my full, my first full day back at home. Um, it's been great. Like I've, I don't know if I'm just really happy because I'm high with so many drugs or because I'm just really happy to be at home again, but it's really, really great like just being around animals again I've just I've felt like so long even though it's only been maybe like 48 hours or whatever less than that probably since I saw them when I was in the hospital it just feels so great to be around animals again and even though I can't ride them it just it's the atmosphere you know being around horses it's great honestly I don't think it's going to be as bad now I feel like I've mostly gotten over the fact that I can't ride for two months now like there are definitely going to be moments where I'm going to just cry about it because I'm watching all my friends riding and I can't I've got a few people that will be riding my horses for me and I can watch them and I can still brush my horses and I can play with my chickens in the meantime I'm just going to be breeding chickens really. At the start of the year I made it my goal for 2017 to be the best year of my life and obviously you can never help when things like this happen but I'm still really determined to make this a great year. Um, you know I this although it sounds dramatic in the terms of like you know life it's really not a big deal. Two months really isn't that long. I can still compete and I can still do stuff this year um, and you know it'll be nice to have a break. I don't have to worry about my crazy coach forcing me to jump too high <laughs> but that's that that will be another story for another time trust me it's I've got some great stories about my crazy riding instructor so that's the story um of my broken collarbone I hope I didn't miss anything out I really should have wrote down a script before making this video if you have any questions just comment them below and I will try and answer them um so until next time I guess see you um as I said the next Maybe three videos will just be the vlogs from England, which I still haven't edited yet. I promise I'll get onto that. I have a million things I kind of need to do at the moment, so I don't know exactly when they'll come, but yeah. So I'll see you in the next video then. Bye.